maybe we could talk about what the hell I think that because it's been long enough, man. I'm not gonna go too much longer, but um, it'd be interesting to see. I probably put a poll up what everybody else think about the situation that we have with police and in this country, right? When it comes as far as like, do how how many people actually that be coming to politics as usual agree with the sentiment of defunding the police? Do you think we need the police? Do you think that we need to change the current structure of the police? What do y'all think that we need to do? Um, when I say when we say defunding the police, I'm in the camp of defunding the police because that means to me that the police have way too much funding that they don't know what to do with. That's why they're so militarized, right? They're overfunded, meaning they got way too many cops that don't have nothing to damn do. So they find themselves in all type of precarious situations, right? They are what they say, idle hands is the devil's playground. So you got all these cops on the street that mostly don't do shit. Like I say, they couldn't stop a crime to save their lives. A lot of them are out of shape. A lot of them are overweight. A lot of them are unfit mentally, physically. They don't really, they pass their little training. And after that, they, I don't even know how some cops are cops, right? Bellies are every damn where. They're not going to stop nothing, my point being. So I don't understand. If you got enough money to, if you have enough funds to put people like that on the force, that don't have nothing better to do than go and brutalize or beat somebody because uh, uh, they had a counterfeit $20 bill or because they're selling a pack of cigarettes or because whatever the case is. I mean, you must don't have shit to do with your time, right? I think to me, a lot of these cops are sitting around and waiting for action, right? It's so boring all day. They don't, a lot of them don't have shit to do. I'm talking about beat cops that actually being patrolling the neighborhoods and the streets, right? So they looking for shit to do because they want to feel like they're worth something and they're, you know, they're, you know, I'm working this damn job and you want this job, anybody who's working the job wants it to feel meaningful, right? They want the job to feel meaningful for, so they create shit. Even if there's not anything going on, that's why you see a lot of times the cops are the ones creating the problem. They're looking for action because there's just too many goddamn police on the streets and there's not enough crime going on. So they're bored all goddamn day. So when something finally do pops off, like somebody stealing the damn Snickers bar, they go and goddamn, you know, <laughs> Afghan style. Right. They getting the damn ARs and the, the M16s out the trunk. They suit it up. They they. I mean, the kid just stole the candy bar. Why do you got on all your tactical gear? Because they never really get a chance to use it. Right? There's way too much funding in the goddamn police departments, and these cops don't really have shit to do. I know this from growing up in my own neighborhoods. A lot of the cops are really bored all day. They feel insignificant because there's not much really going on, right? Only problems that's really, cre most of the problems that's created in the neighborhoods I grew up in, the police created. They look for a creation of a problem. A lot of times they come on the scene and do dumb shit and everybody's around like, OK, why are you here? What the hell are you doing? Right. Sometimes people don't even call these motherfuckers. They just driving by and want to start some shit. Right. Maybe because they see somebody arguing. And if you wouldn't have stopped and wouldn't have got involved and now somebody's dead, that argument would have diffused and people would have went on because people argue. Don't mean that, uh, you know, out of the million arguments that happen every day. Um, I would say there's a small percentage of them that turns violent and deadly, right? That's what people we do. So if they run by, walk, drive by, and they see a couple or two people arguing, they'll get involved. And soon as they get involved in anything, it uh, damn near immediately makes the situation worse. So it'd be interesting to see. I'm gonna probably put a poll up to see what y'all think about policing in America. So that's my, when I think of defunding the police, I think about it from that way, because I know growing up in my neighborhoods and where I'm from, that it was just way too much, um, how we say, like, uh, way too many cops. The most time they didn't have shit to do. So I'm a hundred percent on board with, uh, defunding the police. Also, I would just say like, um, I don't know what's happening to the country. Like I know what's happening to the country, but I just don't understand how in the hell we haven't evolved yet. How can we possibly still be going through a lot of the same issues and problems we were going through back in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s? It's just, I don't see how have we not transcended what we know are obvious mistakes, what we know are obvious, obvious missteps, right? Things that are fixable. It ain't like these things aren't fixable. These things are fixable, but for some reason, we choose to just go along with the status quo on how things normally, like, okay, I guess we can't do nothing about it, so this is just the way it is. 
Right. Well, I'm trying to do my best to get out of that. It's just the way it is mentality because it's just the way it is, is not doing anything to save my people. And when I say my people, I'm talking about all people, man, all people who stand up for justice, all people who stand up for righteousness, all people who stand on truth, all people who stand with the people, right? Not just black people or not just white people or not just Asian people, all people who stand with the people. And it's just very disheartening to see that we have not got to a place where we have evolved enough to transcend our old habits. Right, insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting different results. If we had this criminal justice system, we've had this policing system in this country from its foundation until now, with little tweaks here, but a lot of the tweaks not for the good, right? Not for the good. Like the war on drugs came, that wasn't a good tweak. It's a lot of disastrous tweaks that came over the centuries. But to expect something different to happen is literally insanity. So of course, we're gonna get the same results that we've been getting from the 1800s to the 1900s to the 2000s. No difference. Right, it's just a modern day. Right, if you still Jim Crow still in place, well, if Jim, if we know Jim Crow still in place, then how can we sit here and we're all arguing and fighting and fussing about change? It's insane to think something's gonna change if the mechanisms and the systems that we had previously in place are still in place. As long as they're in place, nothing can ever change until those mechanisms, those systems are changed that brought us this grief, that brought us this pain, that brought us our children being raped by police officers, our husbands and men being strangled to death by police officers, our women and wives being shot to death by police officers, our children being brutalized and maimed and gunned down by police officers. Right, nothing's gonna be able to change until the mechanisms that are put in place. So fighting against the system and hooping and hollering and all this protest and shit is all good. But unless you are going to change the actual system that bred this, it don't matter what fringe changes we make on the outer limits. It don't matter if, oh, the Democrats, the Democrats are gonna put in a no chokehold law. All right, well, we got no more chokeholds since that killed George Floyd. Okay, so what? Like, George Floyd's not the only person who died by the hands of police, and a chokehold is not the only reason people die. So you do away with chokeholds. That's not going to change shit. Absolutely nothing. They're not going to change shit. They just say, okay, well, now we can't use chokeholds, so now well, we just shoot them in the goddamn head. Or we do this technique. The system is still in place. So if you're going to try to change the outer fringe layers of a corrupted and co-opted and murderous type system, it don't matter how much protesting, how much screaming and yelling we're doing, how much praise we give to these dumbass Democrats and Joe, dumbass Joe Biden trying to make it look like, like that bullshit he did with the prisons, talking about he's closing down private prisons and come to find out it's going to be like four goddamn private prisons in the whole goddamn country closing, trying to make it seem like he's doing something good, right? These type of games these politicians play, when they know they're sitting there protecting with their lives the system that is actually oppressing us and causing all this grief. So I would say, man, at the end of the damn day, man, um, unless we become more informed of what the hell is going on and what we, what, what we need to be doing, unless we start to get serious about some of this shit, um, like a nigga, a person like me could do these type of shows all day, every day, but this ain't really going to hold no weight. And I'm not just talking about no protesting. I don't know what it's going to take. Right. I don't think violence is going to be the answer. Because if you try to attack violence with violence, you're only going to be getting more violence. Um, I don't know if there's actually an answer besides total destruction. Like maybe this whole thing, our whole country, our whole system, I don't want it to have to implode, but maybe that's what it's going to take. That is all gonna have to implode. We're gonna have to lose everything just for us to damn. But that'd be harsh because of all the strides and all the advancements and all the growth we have made. 
and that's for positive. To lose that would be the, the cost may be too high. So the only other option we got is to try to make this shit right. And it's not hard to do. It's not hard to do. Okay, like I say, making sure that we have certain divisions, have certain uh, characterizations for what type of emergency services are going to show up. Again, don't always need the guy that's been trained to kill with the gun on his hip. We don't always need a guy with the gun on the scene. Maybe if you can have an extra squad car, but they need to be secondary and stay in the background. Right. Say if I'm calling and I'm having my son's having a mental health issue. So I call the police because I can't get him under control and I need some help. Right. We need some professionals that's going to show up. that's going to be able to help me with that with no guns. So that way is no way that they could kill or shoot or murder my child. But you can send an extra set of police officers or squad car with them that have the guns, but they sit in the background. They sit back. It ain't no need for them to come out unless things get violent and ex ex to that extent where they need to step in. But besides that, they keep their ass in the car and make it mandatory that they can't engage. You cannot engage, right? Unless there's a weapon or some type of imminent threat. And we're not talking about no stick or no bullshit. Like, unless there's a, uh, you know, a firearm, then they can engage. And we still need stipulations on how they're going to engage if shit's going to turn violent, right? Like you having... 15 police shoot down one dude with a knife ain't a feasible or rational situation, <laughs> right? Like if you got 15, 20 cops and you got one guy with a damn knife and you can't figure out a way to like get that situation under control without 15 guys pulling out their damn 40 cows and blasting the guy with the knife, then we got a problem, man, right? So it's just got to be logical, sensible shit. And um, that's not what's going on right now. And it's, it doesn't take much to do it. It just takes the will to do it. And then we will, uh, everybody will adjust because nobody want their kids being killed, white or black, right? Nobody want their kids. Even white people are starting to get nervous of calling up the police, right? White people are even thinking twice about, they understanding the plight of the black man and the black family. Right now, you you got to have a second thought of, damn, I might just have to deal with this volatile, violent situation because I'm scared to call the damn cops because they might just make it worse. Right. This is how I, my, I was grew up. Like I, we call the cops. We taught in my. My people, right, my heritage, cops are a last result. The last, like, it really got to be some shit for me to call the cops or for people who that taught me. Like, if you see the cops come in and one of us, my people called them, it's really got to be some shit. Like, they, like, we taught, we not even taught that from my parents because, like, uh, you know, you might have my moms that call the police on different people and this and that. So, no, we taught, I'm taught this from experience in life. Like, out of watching the scene, everything that happens when you're dealing with police officers and the, you know, the police in America, you start to come to the conclusion um, from the environment that you grow up in that the cops are the last option, right? You trying to avoid calling them by all costs. And it shouldn't, that should speak volumes in itself. That should say, okay, hold on, something's not right, right? Like, by, cops are really, literally the last option. And everybody from where I'm from automatically have in their mind that, oh, they don't need to call the police because they just going to make shit worse. And the police come and basically tell you that. Because a lot of times when you call the police and they feel like it's not a worthy call, they get mad at you for calling, right? They say, well, where I'm from, this is what the police literally say. Well, we're here now. We're going to have to take somebody to jail. Somebody getting locked up. You made us come out here. So they're going to look for a to create a situation, right? They pissed off that you made us come all the way out here. Well, they didn't come out there to fix nothing. Or they, you learn that as you grow up. They're not coming out there to solve no problems or calm shit down. They come with the mindset like, oh, you, okay. You could tell them, hey, everything is good now. The argument's over. You know, they cool now. Shit, good. No. They want to keep shit going. They come and say, no, you made us come out here. Somebody's going to jail tonight. Now, what was the problem? And then they'll start cranking shit up. This has happened to me over and over. I've seen it happen 
in, in, in my environment with my people when the cops come. It's literally been situations where you say, no, everything's good now. We called, but you know, everything, they fit, they, they worked it out. Nah, somebody going to jail tonight. You made us come out here. That's the mentality these, these son of a bitches have. Nah, you made us come out here. Somebody going, somebody getting locked up. Maybe even your ass. Right, so then they put you in the situation to tell me when they, they want you to snitch and tell on somebody. Even if you saying, "Hey, man, everything's good, man, chill." Ha, ah, nah, you think everything's good now? You had us like they pissed off; they had to come. So it's all type of different scenarios. Either they don't have enough to do because they uh, overfunded, or maybe the cop was the cop that was trying to rape the little girl, and now you called it, and they called him in, and he had to come down. He's pissed he couldn't get his rocks off. Oh, you made me have to get away from doing that, and I got to come deal with you in this? So wasn't somebody going. They pissed off, right? That happens all the time. They was involved in something that they didn't want to have to leave from. They get a call, have to drop that. They mad as hell going to the call now because they got pulled off or whatever it is they were doing. In some cases, some illegal type shit. And when they come to the scene, they actually looking to start some shit. Because they're already in an angry situation like, oh, shit, you made us come out here. You you called. I had this going on or that going on. And you had me have to come out here. Somebody's going to jail tonight. That's their, that's their phrase they use. Somebody's going to jail tonight. So we learned at an early age that you don't call the, you don't call the cops. That's the last result. So, you know, it is what it is, man. This politics is usual. So I don't know how, if any of y'all experienced that. I mean, that could just be a black thing. I'm just giving you my perspective of how shit is. So you can see where some of my mindset sets at. I right, mean, you have these type of experiences like I've done had of dealing with these people. Then you find yourself in um, this type of mind state like, yeah. It starts to click with you as you get older, as I, in my age, bragging that like this shit ain't right, right? We got to do something. Like they, it's not, it's not normal. When you're young, you don't think about it. Your mind is not fully developed. You can't grasp what's going on. But police showing up saying somebody going to jail tonight, and now nah, you made us come out here, so we got to lock somebody up. You shouldn't have called us. So you know that's my experience with these cops. And uh, with this whole situation, so I appreciate yeah, I heard my little monologue of what y'all think. So like I said, I might put a poll up and see what y'all think about this whole little thing, man. But like I say, man, something got to be done. The whole reason that I changed the name and we starting to do this type of shit is just to, for informational purposes and to inform people. Right. I want to have people informed. I want to deal with people who's informed and a little knowledgeable. So maybe we can start a coalition of a group of people who can get on some common sense. It ain't got to. I'm not talking about no got to be no doctorate or no math. Man, I just need people with common sense. I need to get as many people informed that have common sense as possible and try to build from there, try to build a type of community uh, to see where that can take us. Because right now we're dealing with a lot of people who got mental health issues and insane. It's, uh, it's hard to cut through the insanity. So, you know, that's what this is about. This is to show the type of shit that's actually going on around us. Sit back, relax and chill. And if y'all have some shit that's going on and it's about perspective, man, like, you know, perspective.